no one had ever loved on them. And, and Andy had a dream that she would have a flower shop at her property that people in the community could come to and buy flowers. And her husband had a building built for it, but the problem was it sat about four feet off the ground and there was no way to get in it. We had had so many challenges with the building project at their house that I grabbed Andy and her husband on Tuesday and I said, guys, I, I, I hate to tell you this because I don't like to leave anything unfinished. I said, but there is no way we can build a 20 foot by eight foot floating deck in two and a half days. I said, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my team to get the foundation in, get the decking in, I'll get everything pre-cut and pre-drilled, so all you have to do is assemble the railing and the spindles on the railing and finish up the last few things. I said, there's just no way we can get it done in two and a half days. Boy, was I ever wrong. Because over the next two and a half days, I watched a bunch of teenagers put their heart and soul into that property. Not only did they completely finish a 20 foot by eight foot floating deck in two and a half days, they, she also had horses and they ran an entire new electrical fence around the entire property, repaired a broken stable, fixed a broken gate, um, put in a whole bunch of other stuff, and then because they wanted to top it all off, they painted her barn floor. And that last picture before that one was of all that team sitting on that deck. They had finished it in two and a half days. But that wasn't the coolest part. The, and there's uh, Isla, she's the other one, and that's her enjoying her new re refurbished deck that was made accessible for her. And uh, the kids surprised her by doing an extreme makeover, move that bus. And she, when they moved that bus, she got to see a completely refinished deck with a two-code safety hand railing and a seven-piece deck set for her to have friends over in the community to love on them. And that's the team. But the best part was not the jobs being completed. It was when the teens went to get on the bus. And I said, we're not done yet. And we went up on that deck. We got Andy and Jess. We got in the giant circle, held hands, and asked God's blessing upon that deck, upon their ministry, and upon them. Because at the end of the day, folks, as Methodists, we're really good at being the hands and feet of Christ. But we also have to be his voice. And unless we include the voice, how will people know what we do, we do for him? Doesn't mean you have to preach at somebody but it's reminding people why you are who you are and why you do what you do. Because you love Jesus and Jesus loves them. Manchester, be united in Christ, with Christ and for Christ. Be his hands and feet and voice to all you come in contact with. Churches are growing around us, but we are seeing significant drop in attendance throughout the UMC church. Why? Because I'm wondering if we're not being Christ's voice the way we need to. That's how we're going to grow the church. Share with others God's grace and love, his forgiveness and passion for people. Model it in unity with one another so that others may see what they are missing. Following Jesus is an awesome thing. If only others would see that and they could become part of the fold and serve their purpose in Christ's body. Father, I thank you for your word and its truth. And I pray right now for Manchester United Methodist Church that they would be a body unified in their mission, unified in their gifting, and all fulfilling their perfect role in your church so that this community would know your grace and know your love. And that this place would blow out the seams because of all that you are bringing here that want to experience that same love. May we be your hands and feet and voice. We love you and we thank you. Amen.
please be seated. Before we come to a time of prayer, I, I understand that the uh, buffets in Cedar Rapids are doing, uh, have a little, making a little more profit since you and uh, Pastor Phil aren't uh, engaging and going there so often. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> he told us about that, Pastor Phil. Now we come to a time in our service where we show, uh, share our joys and sorrows, uh, things that are challenging us. These are prayers for the people. And um, if there are some concerns or joys you'd like to share, uh, this would be a great time to do that. Make it brief, Bill. <laughs> He's loquacious. This is such a great day, a great day. And this is a celebration of my beautiful bride's birth. And she is having a delightful birthday today. Well, we hope that your birthday is delightful as you are. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Donna. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Other joys, concerns? Um, yeah. Where are we going here? Am I going to? I didn't see the. Oh, you? Ruth, do you want to say something? Okay. Uh, we have a sister in Christ, Nancy Miller, who went in for a simple uh, surgery on Wednesday, and complications arose, and she went back in for surgery yesterday. So she's in Mercy in Iowa City till further notice. So, uh, Lord, in our mercy, in your mercy. Yes. Another sister in Christ, uh, Marian Sandberg, is facing some issues and will have surgery. So. Um, lifting her up at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Oh, make it brief. <laughs> uh, She's well. loquacious, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I want to make this brief, but it, it's, a, it's a praise and a prayer at the same time. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try to make this as generic as possible and get through it without crying. Um, uh, our daughter, one of our daughters, um, um, disciplined one of her employees last week, uh, wrote her up um, for, le 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 for good reasons, and presented her with the, the, um, the notice that this was, she was um, needed to improve. And um, anyway, uh, this employee filed a discrimination suit against her daughter. And on Monday, um, they found in favor of the employee. Um, so our daughter was released of her position, um, which was very devastating to her. And, um, and she called me and in tears. On Tuesday, she was sitting in a coffee house revising her resume and in walk her two pastors, the associate pastor and the pastor from her church. Now, they did not know of this, so do you think that was coincidental or God thing? I know it was a God thing. And they came in and sat and prayed with her while she cried and they shared. The, the thing they pointed out to her on Sunday, her and her husband had gone out or on Saturday, excuse me, they had gone out to um, downtown area and spread the word of the Lord and asking people if they had accepted Jesus and if they knew how much Jesus loved them. And as the one pastor pointed out, that Satan is always working and protect yourself through prayer and be prepared for what will happen. Now, we know that our daughter is going to be fine. She's going to find a new job. Um, 
it's one of those things that happens in life that makes you a better person, and she knows that. So I ask for prayers for our daughter, but I also want you to know that, that God is alive and well, and God is out there, and we need to share his love with people, but also guard yourself against the, um, the Satan and, and the things that will happen in your life. So uh, I'm sorry, that was a long story but it, but it's one of of service and of of prayer and praise so thank you thank you Jackie lord in your mercy our prayer okay darla i have a young man that i've mentored during high school for 3 years and he's been out for a while and uh, he went to court earlier this week, and he goes again next week, and um, he could be sent away for a while. Um, he has changed his life since um, he's not perfect by any means now, but he has definitely cleaned up some of the problems uh, that he was experiencing and participating in, and I know he's prayed for the first time uh, knowing that life is serious and, and uh, what lies ahead possibly for him. But if you could just keep him in your prayers and his family, it's been a very long Oh, several months for them as they're waiting for this to end in some situation, and that God works in whatever the answer is to that prayer. If you could just keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Um, I don't know if this is a joy or concern, but I think there's some teachers here that are going back to work this week, and... Uh, starting new jobs, Nicole, and Sydney, when are you leaving for school? Friday, so we'll have some college students going back, right? So we want to keep them in our prayers. Okay, okay, Diane. Uh, our mission this month, I hope you've all looked at the board out there, is a halfway house for unwed mothers run by uh, Liz Henry, Pastor Roger's daughter, and her husband in oh, near Lake Okaboji. And if there's interest, I'd like to make a day trip, at least of it, a mission trip, whoever would like to go. And if you want to give actual things or bigger things, they mentioned a chest or whatever, I'd be willing to fill my van, whatever it will hold. So let me know if there's any interest one way or the other, and we'll see by the end of the month. Thanks, Lord, in your mercy. And we want to lift up Donna Welcher. She's getting better, according to Bill, fighting a little cancer in her bladder, but uh, Donna's definitely in need of our prayers. All right, at this time, let's, uh, oh, Jim. I just want to thank the uh, the the men that uh, cleaned the front of the church. It looks really nice. We love men who clean. <laughs> yeah. Lord, in your mercy. Let us bow our heads at this time. Lord, we bring so many joys and concerns um, to the foot of the cross, and we're so thankful that you are there, not only in times of our joy, but in sorrow. That you promised to walk through the rivers that <laughs> threaten to overthrow us and the fires that consume us and uh, that your grace just extends to us in all walks of our lives. We lift up again all those who are mentioned here. We pray for your healing and we know that healing comes in many ways and that uh, open our eyes to see where the healing, your healing is coming. We thank you for our guest pastor today and for his message of unity. It's, it's just a blessing to, to see what is being done in the name of Christ out in this world because our churches need to bring a living Jesus to a what is essentially a dying world. And Lord, just help us to have common sense in our dealings with one another that, um, that we can see people of other cultures within their culture and understand how they live and move and breathe and and we grow if we see that. And we thank you for family times and for times with friends and for times of worship. And forgive us where 
we do not draw near to you and follow the way that you so perfectly created for us to walk. Just uh, be with us as we go out this week. Um, help others to see Jesus in us and help us to be a blessing to others. We pray these things in Jesus' name and for his precious sake. Amen. Time for the offering. Father God, we take these gifts, these tithes that we give, and ask your blessing upon them. Lord, this, these gifts we give are to be used to further your kingdom, to build your church, to show others, and to tell others about the love and grace through Jesus Christ. So Lord, we ask your blessing upon these offerings and these gifts that we give. And Lord, as we continue in our worship, we pray that you would give us the boldness to share with others the love of, your, of our God, the love of Jesus Christ, and that we would teach others to pray as you have taught us to pray. Our Father.
That's why I should always travel with glasses. Yesterday, um, in my final class, the presenter had an airport issue. She had to get on a flight, and so we finished an hour early. And the person I was riding with was in the class with me, and she turned, she says, man, we might as well just go home. I said, sold. <laughs> We're going to miss worship tonight. And I said, that's okay. i got a worshiping body I'd rather be with in the morning. So I came in, and I snuck in the back because I don't want to mess with, uh, with Keith's mojo, but wasn't he amazing? Thank you. You can tell the character of a man by the company he keeps, and I keep good company. <laughs> and I wanted you all to, you've met Ron, and, and now you've met Keith, and now you know who, who duck camp, that when I go duck hunting, you have nothing to worry about. The only thing we have to worry about is Keith falling off the box we have to have in there so we can see out of the blind. But other than that. <laughs> Shrek and Donkey are coming. <laughs> <laughs> So I just wanted to say thank you and what a blessing it was to have you here and uh, please send us home. We got to beat the Baptist to brunch. Father God, we thank you for this body united in Christ to serve and follow you. And Lord, as we go, may we go knowing our calling, knowing our purpose and being your hands and feet and voice both in our community and all that we come in contact with. Lord God, bless this church body today. Give them a wonderful week, and may they see you in a fresh and new way. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day. What up?